Hey everybody, today I was about to jump on my computer and apply for my next seasonal job and I thought what a great opportunity to show everybody how to find and apply for a camp hosting job. Now, I did camp host last summer in Mount Hood National Forest in Oregon, and I really loved it. Yes, you have to clean bathrooms, but they give you all the tools to keep it sanitary and it's a pretty quick job. A lot of the job is checking in campers, ensuring that you're answering questions. Um, I personally uh, oversaw several campsites, so they gave me a company truck and I was able to drive from campsite to campsite through this beautiful national forest. Um, you know, you're cleaning out campsites. You do have to deal with the disappointment of, you know, quite a bit of litter left over by some campers sometimes. But you also get to meet all these people that are like you in their love of nature. And you get a lot of time to explore a really awesome part of our country. So I, I really enjoyed my time camp hosting. And if you're like me, in order to sustain life on the road, you must continue working. And so in my head, you know, I go, okay, well, you know, depending on the length of your season, you can make anywhere between $8,000 and $12,000. And that's a pretty good income. And I'll share my laptop screen with you so you can see the application process and how I go about finding the job in the first place. So camp posting is great if you have a dog with you because um, your buddy can come to, to work with you. Great. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to Google. So let's go ahead where I'm interested in camp posting, considering the one that I was at, uh, unfortunately, was burnt up in the fire. Otherwise, I would actually go back there. I loved it so much. Um, but since it's just not an option, we're going to go ahead and we're going to look up camp hosting and we'll look at my first choice, which is Washington State. Now, when you're looking up camp hosting jobs, there's going to be a couple different varieties that you're going to find. You're going to find volunteer positions where maybe they just give you your campsite for free. And that can be nice. If you don't really need to make an income, but you're looking to explore and enjoy an area, volunteer positions are great and highly needed. So, you know, definitely if you're more just interested in camp hosting uh, for, for your own benefit um, then, and to get a free campsite and, you know, some other perks, then um, some of these volunteer positions uh, are absolutely great. Let's go to this happyvagabonds.com website. And you can see this Happy Vagabonds website gives us a few different options for where people are looking and is going to tell you how much the campsite is willing to pay. So Happy Vagabonds is a website that can be super helpful. You can also do things like Indeed.com or even go to the U.S. Forest Service website. However, most of those are going to be um, volunteer positions. You also have WorkCamper.com. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of cut to the chase and go to a company that I know has a lot of opportunity and is very uh, generous to their staff. <clears throat> so the company that I worked for last year and that I would like to work again uh, this year with uh, is called California Land Management or CLM Services. Now if we look here, for instance, in Inyo National Forest in California, you're going to see that some locations do require a couple they like uh, two people for the amount of hours because it really it's one site. But as you can see here, it's 80 hours a week. All right. So here we can see they have a couple campsites in Colorado. 
You're looking at these high elevations here in Colorado, which means that it's going to be much cooler temperatures. So again, I feel better about that with my dog. Here we see Oregon. They have Deschutes National Forest. Mount Hood, here we can see they don't have anything now. That's not to say that they won't add anything. Uh, they just don't have anything there currently. Um, but the one side of Mount Hood National Forest uh, was real devastated by that fire. So um, they probably have to see what campgrounds that they're even able to uh, have. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to click to apply. And it's going to bring us to the application. Now, <clears throat> as you can see, I'm going to need to put in my name, my email address, my street address, and my city and um, state. That would be where you claim your residency, of course. Um, position desired. Um, and you can put in your desired locations. What I also really like about this company, this um, California land management company, is since they do uh, run several different states of campgrounds and several campgrounds within each state, you get that choice of putting in three different campgrounds uh, of your preference. And then when you get a call, there's a further conversation about where you would like to be. And you can ask lots of questions to make sure that you're set up for success as much as the company is set up for success. Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put in my information um, and then we'll see what screen comes up next. So I just did the real tedious part where you have to put in everything from high school to any college, any experience. You do need four references and ideally, you know, you do two professional, maybe three and then one personal or if you have to, two personal. You also, as you can see here, require you to put in if you have an RV or a travel trailer. And uh, last year, you know, there were a couple people that were van lifers and all they had was their van, and that is absolutely fine. Um, at least for this land management company, this camping company, um, you know, you have to put in why uh, you wanna do the work. They are very transparent. A significant part of your job will include cleaning toilets, and they ask if you have any objections. Naturally, one of the best ways to get hired is to not have objections. Um, and they do also ask for you to put in a picture of your RV. Again, if you're in a van, put in a picture of your van, um, and then a picture of yourself. Um, and then they're going to ask you about uh, your driver's license and all of that. So you do have to put that information in as well. Now that I've put in my driver's license number, uh, I had to put in my initials to confirm that everything that uh, I put down is true and valid. And then it's taking a moment here to process the pictures that I submitted of my um, rig and of myself. Now in the picture of myself, I did include my dog. Um, you don't have to do that, um, but I am always really clear with uh, jobs that I've applied for that I do have a dog. Now last year when I was applying for the camp hosting position, I also applied for a couple different jobs and I found all of those jobs on a website called coolworks.com. Um, that's C-O-O-L-W- ORKS.com. And um, I, I applied for a couple different jobs that were more retail within national park areas. Um, now, I found that although those would be maybe uh, a little bit more cushy, where you know, you're just doing retail work um, and you're not cleaning toilets and raking campsites and cleaning out fire pits and all of that. It was time where I would have to be away from my dog and I would be inside of a building. So it was more my cup of tea to do camp hosting, but just know that if you are looking for jobs on the road, there are a lot of jobs beyond camp hosting. If, if camp hosting is not your thing or maybe you have physical restrictions that wouldn't allow you to do the type of labor that camp hosting needs you to do, there's a lot of other jobs out there um, and, and with a quick Google search or going to websites like Coolworks um, or there's uh, another one called Work Camper News. Just don't stress. You can do it. You can find work out on the road. Now that it's taken my pictures and we've moved on to the next screen, I will get off the soapbox and back to work here with you.
So now we can see that my application has been received. Uh, it thanks me for submitting my application with CLM services. They'll review my application and get back in contact with me soon. If I can, I would recommend applying for a camp hosting position in either December or early January, as you're going to have the best preference over what campsite you would like to be at or what national forest you would like to be at. I do know that um, you know a lot of times there will be camp hosting positions open even into the actual season, so you could apply at any time and still find a position. It might not be where you want to be though. And um, you know, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, one of the wonderful things about camp hosting is being able to really saturate yourself, really immerse yourself into an area of the country or into a national forest that you want to explore. So to have that type of preference, I advise applying early. I hope this video helped you see that with a simple Google search, you can find a whole bunch of different camp hosting jobs. And again, I highly recommend if you're not into camp hosting, maybe check out a website coolworks.com, which will show a whole bunch of different seasonal jobs that might be a better fit for you. Um, and I hope this video, if nothing else, shows you that there is ways to make ends meet out here on the road so that you can live your best life ever.